since mankind first walked on the moon more than half a century ago, it's been a continuing long journey to revitalize the lunar missions, with the final NASA Apollo mission being back in December 1972. Now, humankind is steadily set on sending boots back on the moon, with scientific and economic benefits providing incentives in the horizon. With NASA's Space Launch System, dates have been set and subsequently reset for the start of the first lunar program of the 21st century. In this video, we're calling Shotgun within the Space Shuttle and looking into the NASA Artemis 1 moon mission. Here's what you need to know. In the 1950s, there was a heated space race between the United States of America and the former Soviet Union, with both superpowers locked in a race for dominance in space. While the competition grew out of the existing Cold War, it also became a race of spacefaring capabilities, with events such as who could put the first manned spacecraft into orbit and who would be the first to walk on the moon. The space race was considered valuable as it highlighted to the world which country had the best science, technology, and economic system that could elevate human capabilities and launch into outer space. The space race began with Russia's Sputnik launch in 1957 and would end when the U.S. effectively won the race in July 1969, with the Apollo 11 moon landing in which Commander Neil Armstrong became the first human being to walk on the moon. Since then, there were numerous missions to the moon, but would eventually be halted altogether with the aggressive space program developments due to budget constraints and deficits. However, with the new space race of this new age seemingly backed by billionaires and their private endeavors from the launches of SpaceX, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, it seems that the moon is back on everyone's sights. And while these private companies have been bidding and planning on their respective lunar ambitions, NASA is back with its own program set on sending astronauts to the moon once again. And despite the setbacks and delays already encountered, NASA's plan on the moon is to target a lunar gateway into the vaster reaches of space. You don't want to miss the updates of this mission, so definitely watch on. NASA's Artemis program is the spaceflight program being led by NASA with multiple international and U.S. domestic partners. Its primary goal is to send humans back to the moon, specifically the lunar south pole, by 2025. Artemis is the mythological Greek goddess of the moon and twin sister to Apollo, marking the link to the Apollo missions, which first launched humans to the moon 50 years ago. The Artemis program was launched at the end of 2017 in an effort to revitalize the U.S. space program. Artemis 1 is the planned uncrewed test flight which is expected to launch within May 2022 and will be the first flight of NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, Super Heavy Lift Launch Vehicle and the first flight of the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. NASA has already stated several short-term goals for the Artemis program, such as landing the first woman and first person of color on the moon, with mid-term objectives being establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon with an international expedition team, leading to long-term objectives for Artemis, which is to lay the foundations for the extraction of lunar resources and establishing a lunar outpost. This would make the moon a gateway for other crewed missions such as Mars and the farther reaches of space. The Artemis program is a collaborative effort made possible through the Artemis Accords, which was signed in 2020, with NASA and U.S. commercial spaceflight contractors predominantly supervising the effort, in partnership with the European Space Agency and space agencies of several other nations. Currently, Preparations are still underway for Artemis 1, which will provide valuable data through an extensive test of the Space Launch System and the Orion Module. The SLS will launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and upon entering outer space, the Orion Module will detach and travel to the Moon. This module will be the vehicle that will carry human astronauts, so testing its capabilities is essential. Once detached from the SLS, Orion's orbit will take it 62 miles above the lunar surface, before traveling 40,000 miles beyond the Moon. It will then take 20 to 25 days before the module splashes back on Earth in the Pacific Ocean. The next phase of the program, Artemis II, will be the first crewed test flight of the SLS and the Orion spacecraft set for 2024. Carrying four crew members, this pioneering mission aims to take humans further than ever before as they plan to complete a lunar flyby almost 9,000 kilometers beyond the moon, 
before returning to Earth. This mission, which is expected to take between 8 to 10 days, should provide valuable flight test data for future missions. After building on the data collected from Artemis II, the third mission to the Moon, Artemis III, is set to be the first Moon landing since Apollo 17 back in 1972. Four astronauts aboard the Orion module will dock with the Lunar Gateway and remain in space for 30 days. The Lunar Gateway is a planned small space station placed in lunar orbit intended to serve as a solar-powered communication hub, science laboratory, and short-term habitation module for astronauts, while also being a holding area for valuable equipment. After docking at the Lunar Gateway, two astronauts will then use the Human Landing System, or HLS, down to the Moon's South Pole a region that has yet to be visited by humans. Those astronauts will spend seven days exploring the lunar surface and perform a variety of scientific studies, such as sampling water ice on the moon, which was first detected in 1971. After their one week on the moon, the two astronauts will then ascend back with the HLS to rendezvous with Orion, which would then safely return back to Earth with all four astronauts. NASA is currently focusing on these three phases, from the Artemis 1 to 3 missions. Once these prove successful, further crewed missions will be enacted on an annual basis. Artemis 4, 5, and onwards will then push for the establishment of a lunar base on the surface of the Moon, while strengthening the Lunar Gateway satellite as a staging post for future missions and on the journey to Mars. In the past years, we've witnessed an advent of new rocket technologies that have propelled a new wave of astronauts to avert the power of gravity and reach the boundaries to outer space. From Blue Origin's New Glenn to SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and the development of the Starship, rocket technology has gone farther than it ever has before, providing more power, thrust, and consistent reliability that paves the way for more missions geared towards exploration and establishment of human space colonies. And as we are on the verge of realizing our spacefaring potential, NASA has also joined in the fray, developing its own super heavy lift expendable launch vehicle, which it calls the Space Launch System. NASA's SLS takes over from the discontinued Saturn V as the most powerful rocket the agency has ever used. It carries 3.3 million liters of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and is powered by the same engines as the ones on the iconic space shuttles, which are four RS-25s. However, these Raptor engines will burn liquid hydrogen instead of methane. The SLS, as a successor to the retired space shuttle, will also be the primary launch vehicle for NASA's deep space exploration plans throughout the Artemis program and could be the rocket that will be used for a possible human mission to Mars. As an orbital launch system, the SLS provides the needed liftoff and thrust capacity for a spacecraft to reach the upper atmosphere and beyond. While things have been gearing up for the planned May 2022 launch for Artemis 1, there have been numerous issues that the program has had to face. In mid-April, NASA had to call off its third attempt to fuel up the SLS rocket in what is said to be a crucial part of the mission's wet dress rehearsal at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Team members detected a leak of liquid hydrogen, one of the SLS's two propellants, along with liquid oxygen, while attempting to tank up. This brought a halt to the exercise, as well as stopping other key procedures. The wet dress rehearsal is a vital pre-launch step with a multi-day test that allows mission team members to practice many of the procedures leading up to liftoff, which includes the SLS fueling and the launch countdown. While this delay has been significant, it is important to recognize that these failures provided the means for the team to discover faulty valve systems in the Artemis 1 stack's mobile launch tower in order to provide more secure measures for a safe launch date. There has been plenty of uncertainty already with regards to the scheduled launch. For one, the SLS itself was originally mandated by Congress for its first launch in 2016, but had been delayed at least 16 times. Considering that it's going to cost just around $4.1 billion to fly one SLS along with the Orion module, they certainly need to assure more viability for the launch to succeed. Despite the uncertainty, NASA assures that no launch date will be set until all data and preset measures have been made. At the 37th Annual National Space Symposium in early April, NASA scientists and administrators led a discussion called Artemis and the Industry – Building the Space Economy highlighting the focus that NASA has towards achieving victory for the Artemis missions, which would pave the way for a long-term, sustainable human presence on and around the Moon. 
With the excitement around space exploration these days, we most certainly can't wait till we can finally plot a weekend trip to space and even run around the surface of the moon. So what do you think about the NASA Artemis 1 moon mission? After you leave your comments, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and head to the Space Infinity Archive to watch more insightful space revelations.